What if Earth wasn't Earth anymore? What if, instead of terraforming Mars, we terra-moved ourselves, packed up humanity, left the blue planet behind and relocated to the rusty red one? Welcome to Earth version Mars. First things first, the journey. Getting to Mars isn't exactly a weekend road trip. We're talking nine months in a cramped spacecraft. Imagine being trapped in a metal tube, smaller than a New York apartment with no showers, limited food, and only recycled air. Every breath you take is the same air someone else exhaled hours ago. The view, black space, the entertainment, old earth movies and existential dread. But hey, at least the legroom's better than economy class. Then you land. Your first steps on Mars aren't majestic, they're awkward. With only one third of Earth's gravity, your muscles and bones feel like rubber bands. You bounce more than you walk. The sky, not blue, more of a hazy butterscotch. The sun, dim, distant, and cold. And that red dust, it's everywhere. Finer than talcum powder, and clingier than glitter. But don't get too excited. Take one step outside without a pressurized suit, and your blood boils. Literally. The air has no oxygen, and the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide. Welcome to your new hostile home. So where do you live? Think space-age suburbia. Giant transparent domes with solar panels, oxygen recyclers, and hydroponic gardens. Every drop of water is filtered and reused, yes, that includes your pee. Every calorie is tracked like a treasure. Forget fast food runs. Your menu? Mostly potatoes. Grown in Martian soil, fertilized with, well, exactly what you think. If that sounds familiar, thank the Martian. He wasn't far off. Your daily routine feels like a mix of the farming simulator and survival thriller. Wake up. Check oxygen levels. Inspect solar panels. Harvest algae. Work out, because without gravity, your muscles will vanish. Then maybe run a few experiments, fix a pressure leak, and if you're lucky, FaceTime Earth. Except, wait, there's a 20-minute delay each way, so conversations are more like voicemail tags. And then, the dust storms hit. Imagine a planet-wide hurricane that lasts for weeks. Solar panels get covered. Communication goes dark. Winds howl at hundreds of miles per hour, whipping up choking clouds of iron-rich dust. You hunker down in your dome, hoping the seals hold, hoping the power doesn't run out, hoping everyone keeps it together. Because here's the part no one talks about. Mental survival. There are no birds, no trees, no breeze, no ocean waves, no weather, no seasons, no rain, just endless red, rocks, and silence. Even introverts have a limit. Cabin fever is real when the cabin is a bubble on a dead planet 140 million miles from home. But let's talk bigger picture. Radiation on Mars is no joke. Without a magnetic field like Earth's, you're exposed to cosmic rays and solar flares that slowly fry your DNA. Long term, it's not survivable unless you go underground. So future Martians might live in lava tubes, natural tunnels beneath the surface. Beautiful, right? Living in caves on a lifeless rock, dodging radiation death one sandstorm at a time. Still, humans are stubborn. We might build thriving colonies, invent new ways to live, create art, music, and maybe even Martian holidays. But would it ever feel like home? Would a dusty dome, deep beneath a dead sky, ever replace Earth? What would you do if this happened? Would you volunteer to be a Martian pioneer or stay grounded with your feet in grass and sky above? Let me know in the comments, drop a if you take the one-way ticket. Because while life on Mars could happen, it would be a constant battle. Not a sci-fi utopia. A hard, gritty survival story. Technically, we could do it. But emotionally, culturally, Spiritually, would it still feel like living or just enduring? If this cosmic scenario blew your mind, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more wild what-ifs.
Next time we might just move the moon.